What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna talk about uh, Judo and BJJ for self-defense. Uh, the pros and cons of each. And so welcome to the channel if you guys are new. Uh, I am a black belt in Judo. I've been doing that for eight years and a blue belt in um, BJJ. And of course, I've, I've done pretty much everything else uh, under the sun, you know, in terms of martial arts and all that. And I'm old as F. So I'm like 44 years old, guys, and I'm still going strong. And uh, I'll make a video on um, what I'm currently doing uh, soon. But in this video, let's get to the point. Okay, so you guys are going to see a video I'm going to play in the background here. So it's just, you know, uh, there's nothing particular I want to point out in these videos. Okay, I'm just showing you some highlights of uh, BJJ first. And um, yeah, that way there's something to look at while I'm talking instead of just my, you know, beautiful mug. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with that. Let me just play this. Boom. All right, back to it. So now they both have their pros and cons. I honestly, I started in BJJ. I did that for six years and then I transitioned to judo at the age of 36. And I enjoy both of them. For a little while, I was more, you know, like more of a judo guy and I still am, uh, you know, in, in in, in, in a lot of regards, but I, I'm at the point where I appreciate, I appreciate both of them for their strengths and their weaknesses. Okay. But if I had to identify with uh, who I am as a martial artist, uh, I would say more a judoka than a BJJ guy at this point, but BJJ, that's where I started with the gi and all that. And um, it's, it's tremendous, you know? So in an ideal world, you train both actually you train everything, but you know, like if, if you, if you had these two available to you, you would train both. Okay, so let's start with BJJ. Now, for the, we're talking self-defense here, okay? So BJJ, uh, the pros of BJJ, okay, is that, well, it's if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's great, okay? As long as no one intervenes. Like if you're on, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, or let's say you're with your, um, uh, I don't know, your girlfriend, your wife, right? And then there's a guy harassing you, uh, or harassing your wife and he's alone and, you know, there's, there's not like, uh, any of his friends around, you know, like, and he's drunk, you know, you can, you know, easily take care of business. Right. If of course this person isn't himself a BJJ person, because then that would just complicate everything. So for the sake of argument here, we're talking about people who aren't trained. Okay. Generally speaking, or at least not trained in BJJ. <laughs> so that's one thing. So you can subdue this, the, this, this threat, this opponent with BJJ, and you don't have to necessarily break anything. You can just choke them out, hold them down, um, you know, and then, yeah, there you go. You know, so BJJ is really good for that. That's the pro, right? One-on-one, -on -one, even if the guy's bigger, if the guy has no BJJ training or any kind of grappling training, then uh, yeah, you can take care of that easily, right? And also, most fights end up on the ground. I think the consensus is like, I think 80 or 90% of fights, you know, between, um, you know, two people who don't really know how to fight end up on the ground. You know, they always kind of like just flail their hands around that and then they end up in a clinch and they just fall kind of thing, right? So that's that. All right, what are, those are the pros of BJJ for self-defense. Now the cons, um, it is dangerous to be on the ground um, with, with a dude, right? And one of the reasons for that is that, well, if he's not, um, you never know if, you know, his, uh, someone else is going to intervene, right? Because if you're on the ground and you're dealing with him, then, you know, like you're not able to see um, what's coming your way in a sense. And if he has friends, of course, then that would be a big, uh, you probably won't, don't want to take anything to the ground if, um, if there's that possibility there, all right? Now, the other thing is, well, you have to take it to the ground. That's the thing, man, with BJJ. It's useless if you can't take the guy down. So you have to have good takedown skills. And most BJJ uh, practitioners, okay, it's changing now. But most of them, they suck at takedowns because it's not, you know, their sport doesn't really demand it. Like the way it's structured in a sense uh, for the point system and all that, it's not, you're not rewarded all that much and it's high risk. And the thing is most of the BJJ guys for their takedowns, it's all wrestling base. So it's all single legs and double legs. So that's a little bit, um, um, I think it's, it's, it's good, but for self-defense 
purposes, I mean, ah, you know, it's not as good as being able to to do hip throws and sweeps and, you know, all kinds of um, ashiwaza techniques and all that, like in judo. Okay. So that's the thing. Now, let me just look at my notes here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You have to take it to the ground. And yes, uh, most BJJ guys, takedown skills aren't strong. Now, oh, and there's another thing too, uh, a con of BJJ is that a lot of the stuff in sports BJJ, right, the techniques, it doesn't work as soon as you start introducing strikes. You know, like if you look at, um, you know, you look at what's going on here, this is like high level competition uh, highlights, you know, of guys doing their thing. But I mean, yeah, man, if you're on the bottom, for example, and the guy starts hitting you, it's going to change everything. If you're allowed to knee in the face, elbow, headbutts, you know, those stuff like in, in, a, in a street altercation can change completely the dynamic of the fight. So if you're not uh, properly trained um, for um, those type of um, possibilities, then yeah, you know. And I like uh, Faraz's, uh, Faraz Sahabi's approach, uh, GSP. Peace trainer, where he he talks about how he he wants to have a universal type of jujitsu, where a jujitsu that works across the board, so for sport and for self defense. But you know, when it's sport, I mean, you can get away with fighters. You you game you game you game the the rules and 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 so on. So I mean, if the guy can't kick you in the head, then obviously you could do things that you might not want to do if uh, the guy was able to kick you in the head. But then you know, it's a different sport. Anyways, okay, so you guys get what I'm saying now. Da, 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 da. Judo. Let me just stop this video and then show you a highlight of judo uh, highlights. Do, 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 do. Give me a second, boys. Boom. All right. Stop sharing this. Come back to my page. I'm going to share you guys something else. I'm getting faster at this. I'm setting it up properly for you guys. Uh, where is this? I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible because I tend to go on forever. All right. Okay, so the pros of judo. Uh, you could finish it with one throw. Not necessarily what you want, but you can finish a fight with one throw. Now, what do I mean by not necessarily what you want? Well, because if you throw the guy and he lands on his head and you kind of like, you know, you you send him to his maker, uh, yeah, you know, you might get a lot uh, into a lot of trouble with that, right? But it is uh, a pro right? An advantage. You could, you don't, you don't have to go to the ground you just throw the guy and you know, it, it could be over now. Um, pros, okay. So I kind of already alluded to this, but you don't have to go to the ground. So you throw the guy and you throw the guy, but you stay standing up, right? That's a little nuance there because, you know, in, in, in wrestling takedowns, which is what most BJJ guys do, is that shoot and take the guy down, but then they, they end up on the ground with the guy. Whereas in judo, there's so many options, so many techniques where you throw the, throw the bastard, okay, and you stay standing up because you got to remember that uh, judo comes from Japanese jiu-jitsu, the traditional, the martial art of the samurai. So those guys, they had to throw somebody and stay on their feet. It wasn't throw somebody and go on the ground. With them. Like you see in this highlight video here, people are going on the ground and all that because it's a sport, you know, and we have mats and all that. And because they're gamifying like the um, uh, the rules because they want the both shoulders to roll on the ground to touch so that they get their epon, right? Now in, 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 in real life on the battlefield back in those days, like, no, you stay standing up. You throw a guy, you stay standing up. Or if you, if you throw him and you go down, you make sure you break something or immobilize them quick, quick. You, you, you do, you finish it in a rush and then you get back up because if you stay on the ground or well, you get stabbed and you die. Right. So that's that. So that's, that's the advantage of the mindset and the way most people train in judo is that you throw him on the ground. And then once, if he hits the ground, you know, and it's not an epon yet, you break his arm. Right. Or you go for the choke, like fast, 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 no time to waste. Okay. Uh, ta, 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 ta. So most fights, like I said earlier on, I think 80 or 90 percent, something like that. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. They go to the ground. But if you have judo, you decide if it goes to the ground or not. Right. So, you know, it's not just, oh, it happened by accident because we clinched up and uh, he, a guy fell on me or whatever. You know, like you dictate that. Unless, of course, you're like I said, for argument's sake, you're talking about judo versus some 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 douchebag 
you know, who doesn't train judo, okay, or wrestling or any grappling for that matter, you know, a, a, a not a casual, but you know, your your run of the mill, uh, typical drunk guy, troublemaker, you know, thug, whatever, <laughs> who doesn't train essentially. Um, and let's see now what else. Okay, judo also has, you know, newaza, so ground techniques. Okay, and our ground techniques are very adapted because you know it's quick, it's done like really explosively, fast, and um, so we could do that as well. You could sub and you can immobilize, you know, just the same as in BJJ, except that in BJJ you don't have like the sophisticated takedowns that you do in judo. Okay, and also a lot of times when there's a there's an altercation between uh, two people on the streets, wow, 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 they throw their hands, and if nobody gets knocked out and they end up uh, close together, what happens is that they clinch. Now, once you clinch, well, there's a lot of opportunity for throws. Now, it might be hard for you to go for a double leg or a single leg, you know, like if you're, if that's the tools that you have at your disposal. But if you, a judo guy, if you are a judo guy, you're very, very strong in a clinch. You're very strong. Like you, uh, you know, judo guys who do uh, Muay Thai, they go into the Muay Thai, it's nothing for them, man. They pick it up so fast. You know, of course, they got to get used to like, oh, yeah, I got to get knee in the stomach, knee in the ribs, knee in the legs, knee in the face, whatever, all that. But like clinch, they're very, very strong. OK, so and that's what happens. Like usually people throw hands, clinch up and then there you go. So if you're a judo guy, important thing is just not to get knocked out. Once you, you get that clinch and it, it's pretty simple, just walk forward, just protect your face, jawline, right? That's it. Don't get knocked out, clinch up. You got the, then you get your grips, you clinch up and you do your thing. So next. Da, 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 da. And let's say, for example, you have multiple techniques. Well, if you don't go to ground, you throw one guy, you know, and, and throws are fast. So you throw one guy, bam, then you can kind of disengage with that one guy and then take a look around and then, you know, either defend and work on the other guy or you can, you know, like uh, you, you can sprint away. You know, while all the other ones are like, holy crap, this guy just threw my friend on his head and my friend might be, you know, like dead. <laughs> okay, so those are, uh, let's see, what's the other thing here? Da, 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 da. Okay, it's faster pace. Judo is is a lot faster, you know, a lot more dynamic than, uh, than BJJ. So I think it's a little bit more uh, better suited for self-defense, a little bit. But once again, all of this, it's going to depend on the martial arts, right? But I'm just telling you some, some things that I consider to be advantages and disadvantages. But you could, you know, with the right martial artist, with the right mindset, with the right fight IQ and the right level of skill, you know, like any guy can make that, that any guy, any martial artist with the right qualities can make his martial art work for um, a lot of different situations. Okay, now the cons. It's very dynamic, right? The throws, I mean, you can't do a throw slowly, man. Yeah, you can, but for the most part, they're pretty fast, even when they're slow. So this could suck because you could really like injure an opponent. So maybe you don't want to do that. Like even if it's a self-defense thing, right? You don't want to this, you don't want to kill the guy because if you do that, then it's a lot of trouble with the law and all. Okay, next one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And, you know, sometimes it could happen in the heat of the moment. You don't actually want to smash the living uh, brains out of this guy, right? But it happens, man. So you have to be careful, right? In the heat of the moment kind of thing, you know, adrenaline, you know, like emotions and all that. Emotions, yeah. Okay, next one. Um, it takes longer than BJJ to get good at. The froze, I mean, it's going to, and this is going to vary. It's case by case. It's, it's, it's different, but it usually takes a little bit, um, a little bit longer. You know, how, how much longer? I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, it depends on how you practice and how, who's coaching you, um, how good you are, how talented, how not talented, you know, and so on, how much work you put in, how much focus you have, all that stuff. But it does take longer. Uh, because there's a, a element of um, there's a lot of coordination involved, a lot of balance involved, a lot of uh, a lot of things that that it's a lot more complicated when you're just on, you know, when you're on two feet and doing things, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the the cons. And uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Okay, and the last thing I already kind of mentioned it. So you do have to clinch up to throw the guy, but I mean in BJJ uh, you have to, you know, the disadvantage is that you have to take him down before you can throw. Here you have to clinch up. Now, so you have to get close, and and this that's that's the problem with these both both of these arts. They're the both these cons. Uh, I saw, I'm sorry, like both these arts have the same the same con here is that you have to get close and throw the fool to be able to execute. To do your thing, right? Judo, you gotta clinch up, okay? And in BJJ, well, you gotta take them down. So, voila. So that's it, guys, for this video. I'm gonna make this one short, and it's even it's not even that short. But let me down, let me know down below what you guys think about what I've said. So, do you think that BJJ is better for self-defense or judo is more adapted for self-defense? So this is just my opinion. Let me know in the, the comment section. Love you guys. Peace.